This is the second video I have made since October 7th, um, the, uh, the worst single day slaughter of Jews since the Holocaust that happened here in Southern Israel. And uh, it's the second video in a row that I'm making that has, it's not about uh, DNA, Jewish DNA ancestry, which I know this uh, Seed of Israel site is, uh, is about. Um, but uh, we're living in extraordinary times, especially here in Israel. So I wanted to make a, a somewhat of an educational video, I think. Um, hopefully it's, you can get a bit informed about the situation, the reality that we live here in here in Israel. Um, and I want to sort of demonstrate that to you. Um, I'm here on the campus of Tel Aviv University, one of the world's great universities. Um, and uh, in, in one of the world's great cities, the, the cultural hub of Israel, the coastal the city on the Mediterranean coast here, uh, Tel Aviv. Um, and um, I wanted to give you some perspective on the security situation here in Israel, because we, we, can, we hear a lot. And my perspective uh, is, is as somebody who made Aliyah a little over four years ago from the United States. And I had a lot of different perspective when uh, I just visited here for like a week or so and 10 days. And I would, I would go back to the comfort of the, of the United States. And uh, when you live here for four or five years or longer, um, the, especially the people who, who are born here and grew up here, you have a very different uh, perspective on the, uh, the Palestinian issue in particular and the threats here to Israel than you do from the other side of the Atlantic. Um, and I say that because, you know, I was very dismayed and just very disappointed in some of the reactions of public figures and comments from public figures about the situation here. Uh, I can think in particular as examples, uh, um, uh, the Zone of Interest director Jonathan Glazer and his Oscar speech, which was just off the off the rails, um, just just totally nonsensical. I didn't under, even understand what he was saying. Um, I don't know if he understood what he was saying. But um, and then the the recent speech um, by uh, in Congress by uh, the U.S. House uh, Majority Leader um, Chuck Schumer. Um, uh, just uh, uh, the, the Democrat, Democratic Senator from New York, um, Chuck Schumer, who made a speech, you know, really just blatantly meddling in uh, Israel's domestic affairs, um, calling for Netanyahu's ouster and calling for elections, and um, you know, just just not even pretending to, you know, to have to, you know, that. They're, they're an outsider, just, they're, you know, just completely uh, interfering in uh, Israeli politics and domestic affairs, uh, whatever your views about Netanyahu or the current government are. And they were uh, elected in a free and fair election um, in, uh, uh, this past November, or uh, before, uh, over, over a year ago. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's what the Israeli people voted for. So my, before I give you a little bit of a view on the security situation here, I just want to just briefly tell all the people, all the Jews in the Aliyah, or excuse me, in the diaspora, and um, anywhere around the world, and um, you know, I, I respect your views, and, and you are open to your views, and you can express them anytime, and um, that's fine. There's no problem with that. But I would encourage you, if you really, really are passionate, and you care about the future of Israel, and maybe you don't like the direction this country is going, or with this, some of the decisions are made in the capital in Jerusalem at the Knesset, or in the prime in the prime minister's office. Um, make Aliyah, you know, just like I did. If you're Jewish by birthright, you can uh, you can move here, you can immigrate here, and millions of uh, millions of Jews have and and built this amazing country, one of the most advanced uh, civilizations and nations and countries in the in uh, in the world. Um, and and that, that shows by all the rankings, um, whether it's healthcare or in, in the environment or the economy um, or high tech, um, you, you name it. Israel's, Israel's up there. Uh, quality of life, life expectancy, all of that. So um, come here, come here, live here. Uh, you can vote, you can, you can vote here. You can campaign here, you can, you can choose your candidate. Uh, if you don't like the direction of the Israel, you're that passionate about, come here. But, you know we have to live in the reality of, of what goes on here. So we, we we're not we're not in Hollywood, and we're not in Washington D.C. 
and we have to live with the consequences of the security situation here. And and I I lived here through the May 2021 conflict and the with uh, Hamas in Gaza and uh, a rocket that was this far from my apartment, almost almost exploded right in my apartment when I was living in Ramat Gan, and uh, it killed a man, a fifty something year old man, right across the street from where I lived. So I and and we just had October seventh, the 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 1,200 innocent people were murdered in a mass invasion, a uh, terrorist invasion um, from Gaza. And, uh, you know, thousands more wounded and, and hundreds more kidnapped. Um, and then many of them are still remaining in Gaza. And um, so I wanted, so a lot of people like are pushing for a two state, a Palestinian state. Um, I think it's absolutely the wrong time to do that. Um, it's Israeli people are not there. Uh, as you can see in the Knesset, was voted like 99 to 9 or something to reject the Palestinian state and the polling shows that the majority of Israelis reject the Palestinian state and um, I'm going to show you sort of demonstrate some of the reasons why because we just experienced a Palestinian state in Gaza and look what happened on October 7th and we also have been facing thousands and tens of thousands of rockets uh, coming here to Tel Aviv and uh, putting our, our lives in danger here and all over Israel Central, north, southern Israel, central Israel. Now we see what's in northern Israel with Hezbollah firing rockets uh, on a, and mortars and drones on a daily basis. So, you know, when you when you live here, you and you, you visit here, you see you see how small Israel is, and it's surrounded by very hostile elements and enemies that are just sworn to our destruction. Unfortunately, that's the reality we live in. Um, at that, and the Palestinians have totally reject Israel and the Jewish, um, the Jewish homeland here. Um, they, uh, they believe it's their land and, and they will tell you that. And they don't want us here. They don't want the Jews here. They don't want Israel here. And they, are, uh, they support a violent um, approach to that. And uh, the polling shows that um, the majority of Palestinians support Hamas and they also support the atrocities of October 7th. So if uh, the Palestinians get a state, I want to know you that I want to tell you that it would put the major population centers in Israel at mortal danger, in mortal danger every day. It would make life in Israel unlivable. Uh, we would not be able to live a normal life here. Um, we would be more like the people in uh, Sterot uh, over the years, or now the people in the uh, that have had to abandon places like Kiryat Shmona and other places in the north near the Lebanon border. Um, and I just want to read to you uh, from the. Uh, uh, from the Israeli Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs um, and I will also put a map here to show you and I'm also going to show I'm going to demonstrate first before I do that uh, I want to show I just want to point over here and uh, and you can, you can see as it zooms in you can see like the ridge the mountain ranges the ridge that's only around nine, uh, 14.5 kilometers nine miles around there from uh, the Mediterranean Sea where we are Tel Aviv to the 1949 armistice line or the pre-1967 border or the green line or whatever you wanted to call it which would be the, the border of a Palestinian state so you can see that um, it would a, we would be all this population center with 90 percent of Israel is in the Gush Dan region here we would all be under fire the range of fire from rockets, rocket attacks from the ridges um, that we can see from here, from the campus of Tel Aviv University. And, um, uh, you know, uh, um, it, would, it, would, it, would, it would, again, it would be like completely unlivable here. Uh, you know, they, they would be able to fire rockets all the time on us on a daily basis. And, you know, uh, a Palestinian state, if it looks anything like Gaza, uh, would be uh, would be a terrorist state. It would uh, they would accumulate weapons and, and and all kinds of weapons and they would use it uh, against Israel. And um, uh, but I just want to read this before um, and you know it would be also be uh, an Iranian proxy state. It would turn into an Iranian proxy terrorist state, just like Lebanon is and Syria and Gaza. And you know there would be like Iranian operatives agents. Um, you know, Hezbollah, Hamas, uh, Islam, whatever you want to, uh, all the terrorist groups will be able to, to, to get right at the border here, nine miles from us here. 
and they would be able to be right would be right in the firing range. Um, and so, you know, I'm just going to read this. Numerous Palestinian terrorist attacks have originated in Judea and Samaria, uh, otherwise known as the West Bank, an area that lies in close proximity to Israeli population centers. At one point, the distance from the 1949 armistice line, the Green Line, to the Mediterranean Sea is only about 14.5 kilometers, nine miles. Uh, this narrow part of central Israel, stretching, stretching along the coastline between Hadera and Gedera, uh, includes the city of Tel Aviv, where we are right now, and constitutes the core of Israel's economic life, where millions of Israelis live and work. In fact, all of Israel's major towns, as well as most of the strategic locations in the country, are within firing range of Judea and Samaria. For instance, Ben Gurion Air International Airport is only about six kilometers, nine, or, excuse me, four miles away from the Green Line. Therefore, even sh uh, fairly short range rockets or mortar shells could paralyze Israel's vital air connection with the world. And uh, there's a map here that they provided uh, from the uh, IDF, um, the IDF mapping unit, the Israel Defense Forces mapping unit, uh, that um, that shows that uh, um, that uh, oh, sorry one second here. Um, so it shows that where we are right now in Tel Aviv, Yafo, is within the range of um, uh, 122 gra grad rocket, a, gra a grad rocket, which has a 20 kilometer or 13 mile range. So they they shoot, you could shoot grad rockets here, and they could hit Tel Aviv University, where we are, right where we're standing. Um, you know, other, uh, very close to us, and uh, is within the range of, uh, of a Qassam rocket, which is a 16 kilometer, 10 mile range. Um, and then much, J Jerusalem, um, Mo Modain, uh, other, other areas, uh, big population centers, are within range of mortars. Uh, uh, mortars uh, that could fire 10 kilometers or 6.2 miles um, and uh, you know a, a lot of the, the rest of Israel is within the range of a, a Fajar um, 5 rocket Iranian rocket which has a, a range of 75 kilometers or 47 miles so it's just we can't do it it's, it's just we just cannot do it and uh, um, you know it, the, uh, I want to just finish by sharing a quote with you from uh, Mahmoud al-Zahar. He's a Hamas leader, and he said this in an interview in, in 2010 that was translated by Memory, memory uh, the, uh, the, the uh, Middle East, um, uh, I'm not sure exa exactly the acronym, but it's a research institute that translates uh, uh, Hama uh, Palestinian statements in Arabic into English. And... Um, he quote, I'm just going to read the quote, and then I'll, that'll be it. A quote, this is our plan for this stage, to liberate the West Bank and Gaza without recognizing Israel's right to a single inch of land and without giving up the right of return for a single Palestinian refugee. Our plan for this stage is to liberate any inch of Palestinian land and to establish a state on it. Our ultimate plan is to have Palestine in its entirety. I say this loud and clear so that nobody will accuse me of employing political tactics. We will not recognize the Israeli enemy. So a Palestinian state would be used as a launching pad for the complete takeover of Israel with, and replace it with a Palestinian state, which would mean that the genocide of the 7 million Jews here in Israel, and which was the plan of what Hamas wanted to do on October 7th, and if we ever, ever, ever give them a Palestinian state, it would put uh, it would be absolutely an existential threat to Israel, and a very and and we would be right here in Tel Aviv. We would be in the firing range of their rockets every single day. So we cannot ever, ever allow a Palestinian terrorist state uh, nine miles from Tel Aviv. Um, never will never have Israeli people will never allow it. Thank you for watching.